Good evening, my name is Brittany Smithley. I am a second year professional student at Texas Lutheran University, and today I will be talking to y'all about some basic pharmacological concepts, specifically dose response and therapeutic index. Before we begin, I just wanna go over with everybody in case you don't know what a drug is. So a drug is something that alters your physiological function by either replacing, interrupting, or potentiating existing cellular functions. And one important thing to mention here is that a drug cannot give a cell an ability or a function that it does not already inherently possess. So it cannot give a cell a new function, but it can do these three things, the interrupting, potentiating, and replacing the existing cellular functions. And people take drugs for several reasons. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, there's a couple of key terms that I want y'all to be familiar with, one of them being dose, which is the amount of a drug that is administered, the threshold, which is the minimum amount of drug for someone uh, to take to receive a perceivable response, and then maximal effect, which is the greatest response a drug will produce no matter how much dose you administer. And getting into primary and secondary effects, Every drug has primary and secondary effects, and the primary effects are the whole reason that you are taking the drug in the first place. It's the reason why healthcare providers prescribe certain drugs to certain patients, uh, and it produces the therapeutic effects that you're looking for. So for example, if you want to relieve your fever, you would take aspirin, but that comes with its secondary effects as well, and most people refer to these as side effects. Um, they may be desirable and they may be undesirable. So st sticking with the aspirin example, uh, they have analgesia and anti-inflammatory properties as well, and you may get the primary effect you're looking for, such as fever reduction, but it might also upset your stomach or cause nausea. And getting into the dose response curve. So a dose response curve is a good tool to kind of evaluate and compare the efficacy and potency of related drugs. So take two of the drugs that are in the same uh, NSAID class, for example, ibuprofen and naproxen. We can put those side by side in a dose response curve. And as you can see, from the A, B, C, and D graph that I have listed here on the slide, the drug is going to gradually and smoothly kind of increase through its threshold into its maximal effect, but you will notice at the bottom axis that it is going to be different doses of the drug. So uh, it kind of compares the potencies, which is the uh, stronger the potency, the less of a dose of a drug you have to take to achieve your desired effect. So as you can see for drug A, you get to take less of a dose to, re to reach that threshold at the 50% than you would for drug B. Drug B, you have to take a little more to reach that threshold. And uh, the uh, example I mentioned earlier about naproxen and ibuprofen, you can take less of a dose of naproxen to achieve that threshold than you would be able to take a dose of ibuprofen. You'd have to take more to achieve that same response. And getting into therapeutic index, although drug potency can determine the dose required to achieve a desired effect, it uh, does little to determine drug safety. And when we're looking at drug safety, we want to give somebody the appropriate dose of a drug so they achieve those desired effects, but we want them to have as least side effects as possible. And the more of, of a drug you take, the more of those secondary effects you're going to experience. So a couple of uh, terms that I want to introduce to you now are median effective dose, which is also uh, called ED50. And it's if you take a population of uh, test subjects, 50% of them are going to achieve desired effects with a particular dose. So for ibuprofen, that can be 400 milligrams, for example. Other drugs, it may be more, it may be less. But the toxic dose of a drug, TD50, is going to be uh, what's considered an overdose of the drug. So it's going to be that point where you're experiencing those adverse secondary effects. So to have a safe drug, the therapeutic index between your ED50 and TD50 needs to be greater than one to one. And I'll show you on the next slide what that looks like. As you can see on the picture on the left, the therapeutic index is going to be pretty wide there. So in 50% of the population, you're going to achieve a desired effect with a certain dose, and if you exceed that certain dose by 
we'll say two times that, that's going to be your toxic dose in 50% of the population. And that's considered a safe therapeutic window. Now, if you look at the or, uh, therapeutic index, excuse me, and if you look at the picture on the right, you will see a narrow therapeutic index. So as you can see, the dose that um, is in that space is considerably smaller, making the drug less safe. So take, for example, one pill is going to get you that achieved of that desired effect that you're looking for but if you take another pill you're going to reach that TD50 in which you have upset stomach or maybe it gives you really bad cramps uh, you're gonna reach that toxic effect and we want a drug that's gonna have a wider therapeutic index so that we can have a safely administered drug and the clinical importance of that, like I just said, when we administer drugs to patients, we want to be able to give them a dose that's going to help them and not hurt them. So we want them to be able to reach threshold, and we want them to understand that maximal effect principle. I know there's so many times that I've heard had a patient tell me that, you know, instead of taking the recommended two ibuprofen pills, they took four, when in reality, taking that extra dose probably isn't going to give them any more effect than it already is. And... Uh, explaining them primary versus secondary effects. The primary effects are the reason you're taking the drug, but the more of the drug you take, you're not going to get a more, like a bigger effect out of it. You're just going to be increasing that chance of experiencing adverse effects. And like I said, it all comes down to drug safety, making sure we have a safe therapeutic index. And if we do have a drug being administered to a patient that has a narrower therapeutic index, we make sure we really educate that patient on uh, the safer ways to take it, making sure they're waiting the appropriate time window, making sure that they're eating food with the drug if necessary, and etc. And thank you all very much. I hope you all have a wonderful day.